Hi everyone, today we'll be talking about setting up backends and triggering different backends from port. So as you recall, we've talked about previously that port supports a variety of backends. Now a backend's job is to perform the actual business logic once an action has been triggered in port. So the flow would be a user goes to port and triggers an action through the UI form with the different inputs that he requires. Port will generate a payload from those inputs and send them to your backend. Now your backend is actually an action handler that is meant to use those inputs to perform some meaningful change in your environment. An example for action handler could be a runner of a Jenkins job, a process that opens a pull request or sends an API request, and so on and so forth. Now, Port supports a variety of backend types, which we often call invocation methods. The first invocation method is an integration to a runner. So we, in this instance, this would be a CI CD runner, uh, which would have a native integration. So for example, using port, you can trigger GitHub workflows or Jenkins pipelines, CR, Circle CI workflows, and so on. Another backend that we have is Webhook. In the Webhook backend, once an action is triggered, port simply generates a payload and sends via a POST request that payload to an endpoint that you provide, which is your backend. And the last uh, invocation method is event subscription. In this instance, once an action is triggered, port generates a payload and sends it to a Kafka topic that you as a consumer can take the messages from on demand uh, as you need them. And then once you receive the action payload, uh, invoke your backend and perform the, the business logic that you require. Now, it is important to note that port self-service actions use an asynchronous model. What that means is once an action is triggered, an action object is created, and then it stays live for as long as you don't report a final status for it. So we understand that actions can take a very long time. For example, if you're deploying complete new infrastructure or a new developer environment. So we don't impose a time limit on how long that action can run, and it is up to you to add the logs and report that the action has completed when it has completed. So if we go through the different steps, and we're gonna show them one by one with a live example, the first step is actually triggering the action. So let's go ahead and do just that. So as you can see here, the process is uh, the UI form is filled and submitted. Port will take that those inputs and send them to the backend. So in this instance, uh, we have here a deploy service manual action. And if we go to the self-service hub and trigger it, it has some inputs. So let's say docs demo and as some inputs, let's just do foo bar. And we're gonna send it. And what's going to happen is this action will create a new action object that is currently in progress. And since at the moment I simply connected it uh, to SME, which is just a sync for post request, no logic is going to happen. But what we can do is we can actually go to SME and see the action that was triggered. So we can see here the payload and also the inputs. So we can see the exact config that I sent. And now, once we have that payload, assuming that we are the backend, we can start using it to actually perform some actions and update the catalog and also update the environment according to what was requested. So if we go to the second step, now our backend is triggered and now we can actually perform some business logic. Now for the third step, we have the part where we reflect action progress. So what I want to demonstrate now is how we send live logs and update the status of an action as it is running. So we're gonna go to my postman right here. And first of all, I already saved up the uh, action run ID. So if I go ahead and try to get it, you can already see that the action is in progress and it's currently running. Now let's add some logs. So again, I'm just going to update the action ID and let's just send a message. Hello from docs setup backend demo. Let's click on send and we have a new log line. And if we go to port, what we'll see is that we actually have those new logs in. 
Now I want to take it a step further and create an entity that is related to this run. So I'm going to create a new entity with this run ID. And what this process does is when it creates the entity, it actually ties it to the action. What this gives us is when we look at the affected entities tab of the action, we can actually see which entities were created or changed or modified in some way because of this action run. And this lets you close the loop and understand exactly how things in the catalog change based on the different self-service actions that are triggered. So up until now, we have triggered the action, uh, we saw the payload that was generated, we updated the live logs and sent some status updates and also updated the catalog. Now it is time to give the action a final status and also see the complete results. So if we go again to Postman and we're just going to update the run ID one more time and just send a final log set up back in demo complete and we go ahead and send it. Uh, we got back the complete action with all of its uh, different fields and the final status. And if we go back to port, what we can see here that the action has changed to success. And also we have a summary saying the setup back and demo is complete. So as you can see, we went through all of the steps of the async model, and this was just a small sample, but you can understand that if you take some more long running actions and functions and business logic, then you can use this model to create very flexible actions that keep updating the user inside port as the action is running about what it's doing and how it is progressing. Now, the final result that we got is that the action progress is fully reflected inside port. We have the logs, we have the status, we see how the software catalog has changed because of this action. And that gives us a lot of power to understand how actions are affecting our environment, but also to the consumers of the action. This keeps them in the loop and helps them understand exactly what is going on as their self-service action is running. Up next, we are going to talk about specific invocation methods, and we're going to start with the webhook method.